Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Vance Rodriguez, who is also known as the Mostly Harmless Hiker? This is the topic of a documentary on the streaming service Max, titled, They Called Him Mostly Harmless. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. Vance John Rodriguez was born on February 25, 1976, in Lafayette Parish, Louisiana. He had a brother and a sister. At age 15, Vance walked into a field carrying a firearm with the intent of bringing an end to his own life. He fired one time, striking his stomach, after which he changed his mind. He caught the attention of a motorist who pulled over to assist him and called the authorities. It took several surgeries to repair the damage, but Vance survived. He was left with a scar on his stomach and spent some time in a mental health facility. His stay in the facility was a negative experience, and he grew to resent his parents for sending him there. With the approval of his parents, Vance was emancipated at the age of 17. In 1994, he was arrested for shoplifting in Lafayette Parish. Vance graduated from high school and enrolled in college. At some point, he developed an extreme interest in video games. He would sometimes play them for an entire day. Even though Vance did not graduate from college, he was able to find work with an e-commerce company in Baton Rouge. Vance became a respected information technology engineer for this company. They were impressed at his ability to write code, but there were some problems with his performance. Vance wrote code in an overly complex fashion. It was functional, but not written in a way that was easy for other people to understand. Almost like it never occurred to Vance that anyone else would ever need to comprehend or modify his code. Despite being a somewhat productive worker, Vance did not have the same success at a social level. Isolation was a primary component of his life. When Vance was forced to interact with people, the impression he made was often not favorable. For example, he had a strange sense of humor that involved enigmatic jokes. Similar to his code writing, it was like Vance was in a separate world communicating in a different language. He was disconnected from the experiences of others. He did not appear to have empathy. Vance would wear all black clothing to work, including a trench coat. Eventually, his coworkers came to believe he suffered from mental health symptoms, including a problem regulating his intake of alcohol. A cycle emerged where Vance would sever contact with everyone for a brief time, but then rebound to his baseline level of low social activity. So he went between no contact and little contact. During his time in Baton Rouge, Vance became romantically involved with a woman. The relationship ended after he allegedly harmed her both physically and emotionally. In 2013, Vance moved to Brooklyn, New York, but he did not give up his job with the company in Baton Rouge. He was now a remote worker. In Brooklyn, he managed to find another girlfriend who he lived with in a 500-square-foot apartment. She would later claim that Vance was romantic, but then he stopped communicating. About a year after leaving Louisiana, Vance quit his job and lived off the money he had accumulated. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. In April of 2017, Vance suddenly left his apartment in Brooklyn and went hiking. He did not take his wallet, credit cards, or passport. So in one moment, he was in his apartment, and for no particular reason, he just started hiking. It sounds like another Forrest Gump-inspired tragedy. Vance cut off contact with everyone in his life and did not carry a cell phone. He started his hike near Harriman State Park in New York and continued south on the Appalachian Trail. This is a hiking trail that runs from Maine to Georgia. It is just under 2,200 miles long, which makes it the longest hiking-only trail in the world. On his journey, Vance encountered many other hikers, as would be expected. He was described as personable, yet mysterious, two adjectives that don't normally go together. He told people he was from Baton Rouge, 
and he had worked in the technology industry. His intended destination was Key West, but the higher purpose of his journey was to detox from his digital life. It is customary for hikers on the Appalachian Trail to use a trail name, but the tradition mandates that the name is assigned by others, not self-selected. Vance was originally referred to as Denim, which reflected his unwise choice to wear jeans on the trail. Later, Vance gave himself the trail name Mostly Harmless. He had used this phrase prior to beginning his journey, which is why people believe it was self-selected. Vance stood out on the trail as someone who did not have any idea what he was doing. Other hikers noticed that he carried a backpack that was over 50 pounds. It was too heavy and too large to be practical on the trail. They also noticed that he took unnecessary risks, like not having a cell phone. Some hikers interpreted his odd behavior as a sign that Vance was truly a hardcore master of the trail. Others accurately recognized that he was reckless and destined to have a tragic outcome. Vance maintained his anonymity on the trail. One time he checked into a hostel that required his real name, but he supplied an alias. Despite trying to stay unidentified, he did reveal true statements about his past to other hikers, like references to his career and where he was from. By December 1, 2017, Vance made it to northern Georgia. He told another hiker he wanted to figure out a route to the Florida Keys. The hiker printed out maps for Vance because Vance refused to use a cell phone. On January 28, 2018, Vance encountered a woman named Kelly, who was a trail angel. She assisted hikers by offering them food, water, or other supplies. Kelly gave Vance a sticker containing the words FT through hike and took a photograph of him. FT stood for Florida Trail. Like other people that Vance encountered, Kelly was concerned that he was carrying a very large backpack and not carrying a cell phone. On February 22, 2018, Vance was spotted in Monticello, Florida by two women who were hiking. He mentioned how he did not have a GPS or a good map. Two days later, Vance was spotted by a woman at the Sand Pond Campground. He told her that he had some health problems and wanted to finish the trail while he was still capable of doing so. Vance was spotted near Paisley, Florida on March 17, 2018. The hiker who encountered him noted that Vance appeared to be thin. In April of 2018, a year after he left Brooklyn, Vance was spotted alive for the last time. The man who saw him believed that he was well fed, so he had a different observation than the one made the previous month. Like many others, the man noticed that Vance was carrying a lot of weight in his backpack. He offered to ship Vance's winter clothes home, but Vance declined the offer. On July 23, 2018, two hikers entered the Big Cypress National Preserve in Collier County, Florida, and reached an area called Noble's Camp. At about 8.27 p.m., they came across a yellow tent with a pair of boots sitting outside. The hikers noticed an unpleasant odor. They looked through the windscreen of the tent and saw the dead body of Vance Rodriguez. His body was twisted and his eyes were open. The hikers called 911. They, of course, did not know the identity of the man. Here's what the police found during the course of their investigation. There was nothing on Vance's body or in the tent containing his name, so investigators could not figure out who he was. He weighed just 83 pounds. There was plenty of food in the tent, as well as $3,640 in cash. The tent was only a few miles from Interstate 75, and a truck stop was about six miles away. There were two notebooks in the tent, which contained handwritten notes about an online strategy game for programmers. No illicit substances were detected in Vance's system. The authorities believed that Vance had died recently, and there was no foul play involved. He did not have any injuries or tumors, no illnesses were detected, no cancer, no infectious diseases. The police really didn't find anything other than the pronounced weight loss and a faint scar on his stomach. The cause of death was listed as undetermined. Investigators worked diligently to solve the mystery of Vance's identity. They ran his fingerprints, but there were no matches, even though he had been arrested for shoplifting in 1994, as I mentioned. They tried matching dental information, and using facial recognition, but still no success. 
Vance's case drew the attention of thousands of people online who desperately wanted to determine his identity. Many people forwarded their ideas to the police, but none of them worked out. Eventually, it was determined that the hiker was known as mostly harmless, but there was still no real name. In July of 2020, DNA test results indicated that the mysterious hiker was probably from southern Louisiana. Social media efforts were intensified in that area in the hope that someone would recognize the man. In December 2020, a former co-worker recognized him and identified him as Vance Rodriguez. When the police contacted Vance's family, they didn't even realize he was missing. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Vance Rodriguez had symptoms of depression, used alcohol excessively, and was a loner. His mood was described as moving up and down, suggesting that his depression may have been episodic. This is very common with depression. At times, Vance was viewed as likable and personable, but most of the time, he kept to himself. A pattern emerged where he would make a good initial impression on people. However, if those people spent a lot of time with him, their opinion would change. Now he would appear detached, bizarre, and moody. Vance appeared to have schizoid personality features. He did not want to be part of a family, did not have close friends, chose solitary activities, and was cold and detached. People with schizoid personality features often demonstrate a satisfactory work performance, especially if their jobs do not require a lot of social interaction. Item number two, what do I think of the documentary about this case featured on the streaming service Max? This documentary was really about the people who interacted with Vance and those who tried to identify him. There was a lot of drama, heartache, self-discovery, and frustration surrounding Vance and the mystery that he caused. The way people reacted to Vance when they met him revealed a lot about the power of Vance's interactional style. He didn't reveal a lot about himself and made no effort to stay in touch with people who he met. His encounters were relatively brief, lacked context, and ended unceremoniously. People who met him gained a lot more from their interactions than would be expected. They described an almost spiritual experience, like Vance's persona unlocked the mysteries of the universe. They felt connected to him, even though clearly they were not. There is a sense that they found what they needed to find during these interactions, like they were seeing something that was not there. Vance was reflecting their own fears, insecurities, desires, and hopes. The experiences of these hikers highlight the power of silence and mystery. When a person does not know the details about another person, they tend to project on a blank slate. When they learn particulars about the person, the projections become more specific. Sometimes knowing the details makes a person more relatable. Other times, it has the opposite effect. With Vance, the less people knew about him, the more they liked him. For his part, this was probably adaptive. Vance kept the encounters distant because he had no desire to interact with people, and he knew the outcome if they spent a lot of time with him. This allowed him to avoid the inevitable ending of disappointing others. To some extent, the same dynamic was true with the people who were searching for Vance. When they knew nothing about him, the mystery was endearing. When they learned about his alleged bad behavior toward romantic partners, Vance was now thought of as a monster, at least by some. Item number three, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Vance may have had a challenging childhood, he once told someone that his father hurt him deeply, but offered no details. Feelings of depression plagued Vance, but he tried to find his way in the world. He had some success and some failure, but ultimately recognized that he did not fit in with society. Eventually, he made the bold decision to hike the Appalachian Trail. He left everything that connected him to other people behind at his apartment. This was the beginning of his final journey. He was willing for this trip to last as long as it could, but he never intended on going back. For a while, life on the trail was tolerable. However, the same mental health issues that had plagued him earlier were still with him when he was hiking. He incorrectly believed that escaping from the world equaled escaping from his symptoms. 
no matter how many miles he hiked, he could not create distance between himself and the depression. The symptoms represented a constant companion. When he reached the southern end of the Appalachian Trail at Springer Mountain, Georgia, he continued to hike south on the Florida Trail until he reached southern Florida. Vance simply decided that he was at the end of the trail, both literally and figuratively. He allowed himself to waste away. Now moving to my final thoughts. During his life, Vance didn't attract much interest, but in his death, many people were curious about his story. He inadvertently created a great mystery, and people wanted to solve it. Before he was identified, there were theories that he was some type of tragic hero. He may have been kind, gentle, and well-loved by his community. Perhaps his isolation was a way of speaking out on some larger social issue, like the expansion of digital technology. He rebooted his life, and in the process, attempted to delete all the software that had been installed. There was something poetic, rebellious, and intriguing about this type of detachment from society. Other theories indicated the mostly harmless hiker was a fugitive, a ghost, or an alien. When the mystery was finally solved, many were disappointed. As it turns out, Vance was much less mysterious than an alien. He was just a man who allegedly mistreated women and never fit into society. There was no moral to his story other than the one about the dangers of untreated mental health symptoms. No simple or dramatic way exists to escape mental health and personality factors. If someone has a personality that is asocial, they are at a disadvantage as far as recovery because interacting with people is how mental health treatment is delivered. Those who were invested in the case are faced with the question of Vance's legacy. Was he good or was he bad? Was he a lovable and mysterious wise man of the trail or a terrible and nefarious offender who could not face his past? Maybe being mostly harmless is simply not acceptable. Being completely harmless is much more endearing. The answer to this question about his legacy may be the only enduring mystery of this case now that Vance's identity has been revealed. Functionally speaking, he was probably both good and bad simultaneously. Symbolically, he has become whatever people want him to be, a testament to the power of being a mirror instead of being a window. Mostly harmless was effective at hiding the ghostly darkness. Those are my thoughts on the case of Vance Rodriguez. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.